Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing with the Apollo Academy missions here and we're going to be doing uh, part 3, Electricity. So I imagine this one's going to be concentrated more on anything and just going over some of the electrical systems and um, that's going to be pretty useful information for us. I was taking a look at the manual to this a little while ago trying to understand all the different stuff on here. And electrically it's complicated but it's not necessarily overwhelming. Uh, and, you know, when I think of complicated and overwhelming, I think of the old ways of, like, when you had DC-6s and you had, you know, four different engines or, like, the Lockheed Constellation is usually what comes to mind when you get a little bit complicated or even, like, the old Comet and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they have for us today as far as this lesson goes. All right, let's take it out. Now, let's see. Welcome to the basic electronic lesson. All right, sounds good. Most of the components in the Apollo spacecraft require power, so it's important to understand how they work. Sounds good. First of all, electrical power comes from multiple places, fuel cells and batteries, all right? Uh, three fuel cells are located in the service module as the primary, and we have three backup batteries if we need them as well. Uh, those of you who know the Apollo 13 story and all about that. Let's see, in addition, we have two emergency pyro batteries for anything that explodes. That's kind of useful. Let's see, we have a direct current system as well as an alternating current system. DC comes from the fuel cells, and AC has inverters, so trough inverters, okay? Uh, most of the electronic power system can be configured through panel three. All righty then. Uh, chances are I'm looking right at it, and I just, ah, there it is, I was right. And condition 4, 5, 250, 275 are important. DC power is distributed through two main buses named main bus A, MNA, and uh, main bus B, MNB. So anybody who's uh, seen the previous videos probably have seen this switch about a thousand times. You'll notice that there's a bunch of options that give you, you can choose which one of the buses you want to power. All right, sounds good. All these buses, uh, components, the Apollo flight manual, yes, exactly. Using fuses and switches, it's also possible to change what main DC bus a component is connected to. It can be an MNA, B, or both. That's actually electronically complicated. It's kind of interesting. All right, let's see. The three fuel cells are connected to the cryogenic storage system. Okay, I believe that's going to be up here. Oh, actually, that's RCS. Ah, here we are. Cryogenic storage system. Let's see. The cryogenic tanks can be monitored through watching MDC2, literally what I'm looking at right now. There are two oxygen tanks and two hydrogen tanks available. The five silver oxide zinc, interesting spelling of zinc, batteries are located in the command module. Two of them are the pyro batteries, and three of them are rechargeable for entry and post landing. All right. The highlighted DC indicator is used to monitor each electrical system. Set it to main bus A. So here's our voltage. Here's our amperage. Click, click, click. And you can see right now, uh, we have about, oh, that's actually quite a bit of electricity going through that. It's about, what is that? 20, 30, that's like 37 amps. That's a lot. And I'm coming down here to a DC volt. So obviously, we run it at 27. Nice. Uh, da -da, uh, just about, okay, looks good. The fuel cell indicator lets us identify what's going on with this. Set this to fuel cell three, click. And the fuel cell gauges above show the state of the fuel cell selected. So let's go ahead and click, click, click. Click, click. Okay, so you can see the effect of the fuel cell. The total fuel flow in here, you can also see the things like the temperature. Okay, that makes sense. You can connect the fuel cells to each of M and A or M and B. Oh, that's how that works. So this allows you to dial in which system you're connecting the fuel cell to. Oh, I like that. So this is the thing in progress. It's currently connected. Yeah, off it goes. Switch to the down position. Ah, oh, that's interesting. The MNA indicator above controls. Notice that it now shows a barber pole, meaning it's not connected to MNA. Okay, so it looks like the A is going to be our primary bus then. Now, the three switches believe do the same, but for the main bus B. Oh, so you can shut it off for main bus B too. Oh, okay. So if I go like this, I've actually taken fuel cell three completely out of circulation. Interesting. That is interesting. Select it to fuel cell three. Let's go pop it over to fuel cell three. And you can see it's drawing no amperage whatsoever. Oh, that is a, uh, hmm. That's actually something I wasn't aware it was that simple to do. That's actually pretty cool. All right, let's see. On MDC3, you can also control the fuel cell heaters and fuel cell radiators. These are used to maintain nominal pressure. Heaters and fans are installed in each tank. Be careful what switch you push. As mentioned, the heaters adjust the pressure in the tank. The fans are circulating the substance to avoid stratification. Eww. Uh, the heaters and fans are on the MDC2 control. Let's go float over to those real quick. Looks like uh, right now the heaters are set in the auto position. There's also the on position, and we'll go ahead and set them to off. This will turn off the heater. You can control the others as well using any of these switches. Okay. The three fuel cell reactant switches on the MDC-3, that's us over here, are used to open or close the reactant valves to each fuel cell. They are open during pre-launch, I would imagine. If they are closed during flight, the respective fuel cell is shut down. There are no ways of restarting them in flight. The talkback indicator is a gray one open and barber pulled one closed. Okay, so that's bad news. Don't do that. The three rechargeable entry and post-landing batteries power the CM and CM, okay? 
Let's see, a battery charger is available to recharge these systems. Awesome. The DC power is converted to AC by an inverter. Anybody who's familiar with uh, Russian aircraft uh, can tell me how sensitive these particular instruments are. Let's see here. Only one inverter can be connected to the same DC bus at the same time. That's interesting, but it actually makes sense electrically. This is prevented mechanically. Each inverter can only power two AC buses, but normally one inverter is used to one bus. That makes sense. All right, let's see. Inverter 1 can be powered by MNA. Inverter 2 can be MNB. And inverter 3, okay. So it sounds like inverter 3 is kind of our backup, and uh, 1 and 2 are kind of our primaries there. AC bus 1 is normally connected to inverter 1, and AC bus 2 is normally connected to inverter 2. Inverter 3 is normally left off. Remember, that's our backup inverter if something goes bad. This was a quick walk through the basics of the system. Please check it for study. All right, let's see here. I know there's a lot to do, but once you start getting some experience with it, it all makes sense. That completes this lesson. All right, so that's actually pretty cool. I did not realize it was that simple, but it sounds to me like there's a couple switches on here. Ah, here they are, the fuel cell switches. It sounds like if you snap any of these in the off switch, you're not going to get it back. So I'm actually going to come float back up here and put these back on. I don't know why you'd ever shut them off of auto unless there's some kind of emergency. All right, so uh, that concludes this video. Again, we, oh, we can see we're enjoying Earth down below. I just wanted to show off, again, the Academy missions here. Uh, next time, we'll take a look at the next Academy mission. Enjoy.